Welcome, welcome, welcome. It's my pleasure to be here with you. I'm Dr. Arnold Nirenberg. I'm 77 years old, been a clinical psychologist for 49 years. Over those 49 years, I've had over 40,000 sessions with patients. It's been my privilege to meet some of the finest human beings I've ever met as patients in my office, very humble and seeking guidance and, and wisdom and, and, and to improve their lives. What a pleasure it's been, what a privilege. Today's title of the presentation is Advanced Mindfulness and Optimizing Resilience. Advanced Mindfulness and Optimizing Resilience. So typically with uh, mindfulness work, we just observe the ocean of thoughts, feelings, images, impulses, sensations. At any given time, we have a lot of these thoughts, images, feelings, sensations going on, and we're just watching it. So as an advanced model of mindfulness, we're going to see how to create a, a rivers that kind of pour new thoughts and images into that ocean of consciousness, creating new rivers of thoughts and images and sensations that will feed into that ocean of consciousness. So we're not just passive observers. We go from being passive observers of our consciousness into actual, actual co-creating the consciousness, adding a new river into the ocean. We're going to talk about how to do that. And then related to that, we're going to talk about how to optimize resilience. We all, we all go through difficulties in life, tribulation, crisis, hardships, setbacks, failures. And it could be a psychological, emotional, it could be a, a, a financial or medical setback. And the whole idea is how do you then get back on your feet come back into, actually come back into yourself, but the attitude will be to come back stronger than ever. So I'm defining resilience as more than just being like you used to be. I'm going to define it now with this new concept of coming back stronger than ever. And we're going to see the, the mechanism, we're going to see the path in achieving that. Now, along these lines, we're also going to be talking about how to reduce the frequency and duration of negative thoughts. That's going to be part of the resilience. Whatever troubles we're having, whatever difficult thoughts, worrisome thoughts, angry thoughts, uh, thoughts of revenge, thoughts that detract from our life, how to decrease the duration and frequency of them. Now, to do this, I want to first demonstrate the enormous power of volition that you have. The foundation for advanced mindfulness and optimizing resilience is your power of volition. So I'm going to demonstrate in a very concrete way your power to create thoughts. And it's going to be part of your resilience and adding that river, a constructive good river of good thoughts into your consciousness. So right now, I'm going to demonstrate this power, and human beings, we're the only species that has this. No other animal has this. Others have stimulus response. They have problem-solving emotions, but only we can do this, and that is to choose your thought. And we'll demonstrate it now. Right at this moment, have a pleasant memory from something happened today, something that, uh, that involves perhaps seeing somebody you loved or some food that you really enjoyed, have a pleasant memory right now. And let your mind just watch this as it evolves, as many pleasant memories as that want to come into your consciousness. Allow the river of pleasant memories to come pouring through your consciousness. Just observe it as it comes as the ebb and flow of thoughts and images.
Now, I know you were successful in doing that. You did it naturally, effortlessly, rapidly. A, a six-year-old could do it if we asked that per, a person to do it, him or her, to do that. But look what you did. You chose the polarity. It wasn't a negative memory, or neg a series of negative memories. They were positive, pleasant memories. And you chose the polarity. It wasn't the present or the future. It was something from the past. And it's like magic. You weren't thinking about it, and then, bam, it came out of nowhere, and now that I'm talking to you, it's disappearing again. You're not thinking about it. So you always have access. You can see from this, you've demonstrated beyond any shadow of a doubt that you can do this at will any time. A pleasant memory. Choosing your time dimension of your thought and the polarity at any moment. So what you just did was you observed the flow of those pleasant memories. and So you weren't just a passive observer of what just naturally comes into your mind the natural images that normally would come. Because typically, most people, a good part of the time, will have negative images, negative thoughts that go because at an evolutionary basis, we're, we're looking for danger, we're looking for problems, we're looking for pains, we're looking for that to see if there's something we have to correct to survive. So this training that we're doing in optimizing resilience and advanced mindfulness is that we're creating that river ourselves. So... Now, I want you to tell yourself this. I invite a continuous flow throughout the day. I invite a spontaneous flow of pleasant memories throughout the day, every day. I invite sp spontaneous arisings of pleasant memories throughout my days, throughout all the days of my life. So you're inviting spontaneously to arise, pleasant memories throughout your days and all the days you have. So you're setting a receptivity to this. And you can remind yourself of it from time to time, you know, that I seek positive, pleasant memories. I like to have a pleasant memory right now. Just to demonstrate that this can be replicated, allow, again, it could be new memories, it could be the same ones a positive flow of pleasant memories right now. Let's do it again. And observe the flow. I know you were able to do it. Perhaps even brought a little smile to your face to remember these pleasant memories. So you're able to do it twice. We could do it all day long. I could remember other events from any time in your life, not just from today. And we can keep pulling up these memories and get a flow. I'm sure more than one came into your mind. I know for myself, multiple. I'm seeing people shaking their head. They have more than one. I've seen smiles. I'm seeing it's, it's, it has a moving effect. So when you're having the mindfulness, you're creating the river. You already have an ocean of consciousness, of sensations, images, thoughts, and feelings. And now you create a tributary, a river that comes into it. It's not a natural river. It's not natural to start remembering or calling upon pleasant memories. But we have the power to do it. It's more natural to conjure up negative looking for what's wrong in my body, where's the pain, is there any hurt, is my shoulder doing better, my over my cold, my headache gone, you know, did I take care of that bill, I, I have to deal with this problem with the boss, I, if I don't take, pay this, I'm going to lose my house, I've got to make the payment, so, but that's part of survival, so your thoughts will normally go to that, but now you're adding, so if you just watch your consciousness, you will see a lot of these negative, uh, aversive thoughts just floating through your consciousness. But now, or you think about things I got to take care of. I got to go get this at the, to go to the laundry. I've got to go to the shopping. I got to pick up these items. I got to pick up the kids. Uh, what you have to do, your shopping list will start going through your mind. And that's just part of survival. But now you're adding, through volition, a positive stream of memories that are coming in. And then you're going to be using this 
on a regular basis, just call upon them. If you already gave yourself the instruction that for the rest of your life, your intention is to call upon pleasant memories to come into your mind. You're already given that. You can also give yourself an instruction and I'm going to, to give yourself uh, certain thoughts three times a day. For example, right now, I'm going to give you a specific thought to have. And repeat it to yourself three times. Have this thought three times and then just watch what happens around it and see if it wants to keep repeating itself. Okay, have the thought and go at least three times and observe. Be mindful of what thoughts, feelings, and sensations come to you. The thought is this. I wish you well. Let other, let other positive thoughts emerge that it come from that. Let it expand itself. Let it lead to whatever positive thoughts and words can come into mind, whatever positive images. I wish you well. I feel in my face a slight smile. I'm aware of seeing flow of water, and I'm saying, I wish you well, I love you, I really do, I wish you well, my brother. See the flow of other words and images coming to mind, and a smile comes over my face. I'm mindful of that smile, I'm aware of that. I'm going to meditate on the smile now. Feel your breathing. You're doing your breathing not to detach from the thought in this case. You're doing the breathing to feed the power of the thought. So when you finish your inhale, say to yourself, I wish you well. And then exhale. Think, have the thought, I wish you well as you finish your inhale. when you have the thought. So now you're feeding I wish you well with your, with your breath. You're not just watching your breath. Your breath is, is intended to feed the thought. So on the exhale is more of a smile because you had that thought at the peak of the wave. Wave comes up in your breath. I wish you well. Exhale, the wave subsides, and the smile remains. The smile of the thought. Thought smiling. The feelings change, you get filled with joy. The smile on your face and in your eyes, with your eyes closed, they're smiling. Inhale. Peak of the oxygen intake, they are coming in. I wish you well. Say that to yourself. Exhale. So in this case, now we're going to open your eyes. What we just did was not just often a mindfulness training. People watch their thoughts. It's a way to get re It's a way to detach you from your, your your thoughts. So if you're getting upsetting thoughts, negative thoughts, you just look at them as thoughts that just come and go and you just get into your breath. But this way of using your breath is actually meant not to just detach from the thought, but, it's a, but the breathing in this way is an embracing of the thought. It's an amplification of the thought because it's a pleasant thought, it's a positive thought, it's an uplifting thought. Ultimately, it's a loving thought, I wish you well. So we're not looking to detach. As a matter of fact, it's quite the opposite. We're looking to attach ourselves to that wave, get on our surfboard and just ride that. Just ride it and go with it. I wish you well. And just take that where it goes. So it's the opposite 
of what most meditation mindful methods, mindfulness methods are about. That's why I'm calling it advanced mindfulness. We're actually looking to attach ourselves to that wave of positivity. Big difference. We're not looking to just watch the thoughts go by as in a movie you know, without getting involved with them. No, we're very involved with the thought. Sure, that method is good if you're having negative thoughts, but I'm going to show you a way to have resilience and to reduce the frequency and duration of negative thoughts. I'm going to show you how. One is, I wish you well. I call it one of these self-commandments of honor. Because if you're having negative thoughts to somebody, you say, I'm going to just tell this person off. I want to slap this person, whatever. It's not the first time he did that to me. Well, then you balance it with a positive thought, with an, an honorable thought, one of the four commandments of honor. I wish you well. Say, so I wish you well. I wish you well, my brother. I, I wish you well. I really do. So you're balancing that thought. So you never fight the negative thoughts. You don't fight them. You let them be because the negative thoughts are wanting revenge or hurting the person. You didn't choose it. You're not responsible for it because you didn't choose it. Thoughts that pop in your mind don't define who you are. When you, you're choosing a thought of I wish you well, so you're a well-wisher. That comes from the son of honor. One of the rays of the son of honor is to be a well-wisher. It's an honorable thing to do. I wish you well. So that way, you need to know this fact, that that negative thought of wanting to hurt that person back for something they did to hurt us or humiliate us, it's natural, but we didn't choose it. And it's more powerful than I wish you well. It's much more powerful in the short term. But in the long term, when you're balancing it and not feeding that thought, in the long term, You'll, you'll reduce the frequency and the duration of negative thoughts. And eventually you'll reduce the intensity of it. But to begin with, you reduce the frequency and duration. It won't last as long because you're balancing it. You're not fighting it. You're trying, not trying to replace it. You're not trying to substitute something for it because you just let it be. You just let it be. And then you balance it. I wish you well. I really do. That's one of the laws of honor, self-commandments of honor. Second one is, I take full responsibility for co-creating my reality and my problems. We're talking about now increasing resilience. One of the things that keeps people very down and depressed and angry and resentful is blaming. So when you go, I take full responsibility for co-creating my reality and my problems. When you do that, it keeps you from getting caught up in the negativity. So I take full responsibility for co-creating my reality and my problems. So you might get a thought, I'd really like to tell this guy off, but you know what, I wish you well, and hey, I co-created the problem, I take responsibility for that, I don't just blame him for it. That's going to also reduce the frequency, it's going to reduce the duration of the negative thoughts, and ultimately even the intensity. Not immediately though, because on a short-term basis, that negative thought is like a roar, and the Law of honor, the commandment of honor is like a whisper. But the whisper in the long run will win. So now we're talking about resilience. So you're going to come back between being, just two of the commandments of that, that give you resilience where you, you get over the negative thought because you're wishing them well, you're balancing with that. You're also taking responsibility for co-creating reality, your problem. You're not just blaming. So that also gives you resilience. And then... As you, watch, as you watch yourself, any resentful situation you have, when you see yourself wish the person well. And by the way, some people you may have so much negativity, hatred or anger or resentment that you say, I can't wish them well. And that's because you misunderstand wishing well. Wishing them well may mean you hope they win the lottery, but it may well not mean that at all. It may just mean you hope they repent and find honor in their lives. So no matter what wrong someone's done to you, you may not want them to win the lottery or, or, or get a great job, but you definitely want them to repent and find honor in their lives. You can do that no matter how badly they betrayed you, hurt you, humiliated you. I wish you well, and in the sense of hoping that they repent, hoping they find honor. You'll always be able to do at least with that meaning, always. So here you're seeing two facets using the two commandments of honor to becoming more resilient. You're going through things. You're not being torn, taken down in the resentments, the angers, 
the jealousies, the sense of inferiority, you're, you're doing this. You're pushing a person well, taking responsibility. Now, one of the most powerful ways of resilience is what I call the warrior's commandments. It's one of the four commandments of honor. I'm grateful for the power I gain from hardship. I'm grateful for the power I gain from hardship. You're not grateful for the hardship. You're grateful for the power you gain from hardship. There's always a gain with your loss. Always a gain. With your failures, your setbacks, your losses, there's always a gain. If you really look at it honestly, you'll see it. The goal of being able to use the four commandments of honor that I'm telling you, and this is the third commandment, is to be able to tell yourself the best true story about your worst problem. That's a tr tremendous aspect of resilience, is being able to tell yourself the best true story about your worst problem, and you, you're very likely to do that if you can keep perspective. The source of all stress, of all stress, all suffering is loss of perspective. The source of all suffering is loss of perspective. You see, I see the nature of the universe. I lost my house. I could see it clearly. I lost my house and it wasn't my fault. My spouse didn't make the payment. She was taking the money and getting ready to leave me. That's, it's, it's, it, it, that's, that's the source of the whole universe is, is I lost my house. Well, that's certainly a terrible thing for any human being. There's no way to minimize that. Losing your home is huge. We have to respect that reality. It's real. It's negative, it's aversive, and it's real. We can't pretend it didn't happen. But that's not the cause of the stress. The stress is not what you're seeing. I lost my house. The stressor is that you're not seeing all the abundance in your life. You have this finger, this finger, this finger, this finger, this eye, this eye. Your kids are in good health. Your mother's alive. Your father's alive. Whatever all the blessings are, it's a beautiful day out. You're in America here. As you know, we have freedom of speech. We have so many, so many rights and privileges that we just take for granted. You know, so many beautiful things to be thankful for. So the stress is not what you're seeing. The stressor is really what you're not seeing. And so this method of using these commandments of honor will help keep you more likely to have a, a proper perspective and not get caught up in defining the situation just by the loss. Now, one of the goals, and I'm going to give you the fourth commandment of honor in a moment, but one of the goals is to be able to tell yourself the best true story about your worst problem. I remember having Jimmy came in as a patient years ago and he said, you know, I've had this job for 30 years, and I just got fired. I was six months away from, I was six months away from retiring. They fired me. I lost my, all my retirement benefits. I lost my health insurance, everything. And what happened was they, he worked at a, at a major network as in security. And he said, it wasn't just the loss of the income and the, and the benefits. He said, I was respected. I was somebody. At Christmas time, I would have just shopping bags filled with my car of gifts because people loved me and respected me. I lost my position in society. I'm nobody now. I was really somebody on that job of 30 years. It was more like a career. And it was related to the fact that they were showing some pictures of new pictures. Of, uh, one ex-boyfriend gave the, somebody the pictures of his girl, ex-girlfriend and naked. And the guys, all the supervisors, all the a watchman under him were watching on, on, on the screen. and He saw it and he just turned his back on it and stopped it. And then they, uh, the higher management found out and they said, hey, you know, this went on. You didn't stop them. We're firing you. I mean, he didn't condone it, but he didn't stop it when he could have. So I said to him, within four weeks, you're going to say getting fired was the best thing that could happen to you. You're going to be able to tell me the best true story about this. I don't know what form it's going to take, but I can tell you it's going to happen. Because all things work for good for those who seek the good. All things work for good. He laughed. He actually, Jimmy laughed. He said, you expect me to say losing my job was the best thing that happened to me? Yeah. You can have the best true story about this within four weeks. Well, I was wrong. It's three weeks. Three weeks later, he comes in to me and says, Doc, and he was smiling. can't believe you were right. It was the best thing that happened to me. He said, all these years, I've had a good marriage. But, you know, my wife never thanked me for all the work I did or anything like that. And now I, I, I make dinner for her and I clean the house. So she came home and she said, you know, don't think I don't notice all the beautiful things you're doing for me. I've always loved you, but I love you more than ever. Thank you so much for what you're doing for me to make my life so much better. She said, all these years of marriage, 35 years of marriage, she never thanked him. Now, she said, it was worth it just to have my wife be happy with me, happier than usual, and, and strengthen my marriage. You were right. It was the best thing that ever happened to me. 
So that's an example. Uh, and it's shocking. You tell somebody he's going through a horrible thing. You say, no, you're going to end up telling me this is the best thing that could happen to you. So look at the resilience. Instead of being even, he was depressed. You can well imagine. What a huge loss. It is a huge loss. So with that loss, look at the resilience. He's coming back. He's, he's happy. And if somebody saw him, he was still boosted up. It wasn't short term. He was just happy. He was actually beaming. So the fourth commandment of honor is either one of two. I seek always to serve my values, or if you believe in God as I do, God, your wish is my only wish. So then you're repeating the four commandments three times a day. And now people take, now to upload this into your psyche so it becomes part of your mindfulness and part of your daily practice, you need to take a pledge that you're going to, I found that you have to repeat it three times a day for the rest of your life. So I have people take a pledge and have them raise their right hand and they repeat after me. As a disciple of honor, I pledge myself for all the days of my life to the four commandments of honor and I'll teach them to those I love. I'll repeat them every morning afternoon and evening, and I will listen to myself recite them. I say, welcome to the brotherhood, welcome to the sisterhood. Now, no matter how despondent somebody is, and I've interviewed over 700 people, no matter how despondent they are, they, 95% say they feel good right away taking the pledge because they're committed to something they believe in. I didn't talk anybody into it. 90% of my patients, when I tell them, you want to take the pledge now, you want to think about it, 90% say, I want to take it now. And so 95% say they feel good, they feel more hope, and 92% say they feel uh, more meaning in their life. So right away, you're getting resilience. Boom, they came up, they're committed, they're part of something powerful. These are commandments, they're committed the rest of their life. How many things are people willing to commit their lives to? Very few. For a lifetime, three times a day. And then teaching it, and then they end up teaching it to their children, their parents, whomever. Basically, what we're doing is building an unshakable core of honor, an unshakable core of honor with the four commandments of honor. And then we have the bridge from honor to reality, which is what is the most honorable thing for me to think, say, and do in this situation. So with this, you apply every thought, word, and action to be weighed in the scale of honor. Honor is the standard for judging all thoughts, words, and actions of ourselves. You bring your thoughts, you bring your words and your actions into line with the honor principles, which is basically loyalty to your highest constructive values and is enshrined in the four commandments of honor. And then bringing your thoughts into honorable thoughts. Again, you're getting negative thoughts, destructive thoughts, and you're balancing it with one of the commandments of honor. Yeah, but I wish you well, or I, I can't just blame you. I co-created this, or God, I'll deal with this however you want me to deal with it. You have that bridge. Basically, what we are doing and using the Four Commandments of Honor and also going back and having pleasant memories, and there's much more to the system than I'm telling you. This is a, just a tip of the iceberg. Is you're creating a, a mental detoxification, detoxifying yourself of toxic thoughts by this method. And essentially, you're affecting the epigenetic expression to your genes because you, your epigenes are very responsive to thoughts, words, and actions and communication. And so they will turn on your, your health-giving genes, such as the P53 genes, such, such as like methylcarbonation. Um, that's one of the mechanisms where it can turn on certain genes uh, and uh, turn off the, 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 the dangerous genes. So your genetic expression, your, gen, your genes will, are very important, but what's more important is whether they're expressed or suppressed. So with these type of thoughts, you're more probable probably going to turn on your life-giving genes and turn off your death genes, destructive genes that will cause cancer, whatever. So the carbon methylation, for instance, being one potential mechanism for activating the P53 gene, which helps fight cancer, just for example, hypothetically speaking. So you're affecting the epigenetic expression, you're doing a mental detoxification, and you're doing some deep breathing. So you're getting tense thoughts, you're getting tense, it's usually because of sympathetic activity, fight, fight, and you really want to get more parasympathetic, act, act, parasympathetic activity, the second part of the autonomic nervous system where you get digest and rest. And so the way you do it, you inhale through your nostrils and hold the air, fill your lungs with air and hold it. And then a long exhale through your mouth. That process activates the parasympathetic nervous system. And as that gets activated, then your sympathetic nervous system will quiet down. And that will, that will affect the flow of thoughts, the kind of feelings and sensations you have. 
because there's a very big difference that when your adrenaline is affecting, it's turning on thoughts and feelings and sensations versus the, the cortisol and other aspects of the parasympathetic nervous system. Well, it's been my privilege to share with you the introductory lecture on advanced mindfulness and optimizing our resilience. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.